everybody, Mrs. Bodishan here. So today we're going to be learning all about the periodic table families and I'm going to relate them to desserts because periodic table families are not the easiest thing to remember, um, but desserts are. So let's go ahead and get started. So alkali metals, that's our first family we're going to be talking about and they are made up of soft white metals um, because they're soft and white. I correlate them with a marshmallow. Hopefully this will help you remember it very easily. Um, they are the most reactive metals on the periodic table. In fact, they react violently with water and it's pretty cool to see. Ask your teacher for a clip or maybe I'll make one later. Um, they do have one valence electron and let me show you where they're at on the periodic table. So you can go ahead and you can look right here. These are all of the alkali metals. Um, pause your video, you can see each uh, element individually just to kind of make a mental note of that. But what I do want to explain is hydrogen. Hydrogen is in the first column, but it is not a part of the alkali metals. This is because hydrogen is a non-metal. It's actually a gas, right? So it has nothing to do with the properties found in the alkali metals. It's not soft, it's not white, it doesn't react with water. None of those things. Um, scientists actually put it on top of the alkali metal family because it has one valence electron just like they do. Uh, but it is kind of misplaced for other reasons. Uh, just make note of that, okay? It's not part of that family. So the next family over is going to be the alkaline earth metals. Um, they do form basic solutions. So this is going to be anything above a 7. So 7.1 or above, all the way to 14, of course, for the pH scale. Um, it's going to be creating those types of solutions. Now, I correlate this with berries because berries, like a berry tort, um, berries are very alkaline. They have a very high pH. So um, this automatically makes me think of it. Hopefully you can tie that together as well. And they do have two valence electrons. So if you look right here on the periodic table, you can see this is where our alkaline earth metals are. And notice we're in the second column. So these had one valence electrons. Now these have two valence electrons. So you can kind of get the feel of what's really happening here so far. All right, next one is gonna be our transition metals. Now these are gonna be the second to last shell that holds more electrons. Now you might not understand what that means, so let me explain. Um, in science class, you probably learned that the configuration of a Bohr diagram is um, the first shell can hold two electrons, the second shell can hold eight electrons, the third shell can hold eight, so on and so forth, right? Um, now, what this is saying is if it's a transition metal, it has this unique property, a unique ability to be able to hold more electrons in the second to last shell rather than eight, it can hold more. Um, now these are gonna be all your classic metals. Because of that, I'm representing these with macarons. So macarons come in lots of different colors and flavors, um, and that's kind of what our classic metals do too, right? So some of the classic metals that you may know of are like copper and silver and gold and platinum and nickel and mercury and all of these. So they're definitely going to be all the ones that you're familiar with coming in lots of variety. Uh, now, where are they located? They are right here. They are the indented portion of our periodic table. Now, make note of these that have this little star here, right? Um, if you look at this first row, it says 57 through 70. Well, if you go down, you can see that our lanthanides are 57 through 70. So really, they've just taken this chunk and they've put it down here, okay? Now, the same thing for this next row. It says 89 through 102. So what they've done is they've taken it out and they put it here with our actinides. So here's 89 all the way through 102. So really these two rows fit right in here, but we go ahead and remove them and we put them below. So we don't mess up any of the other properties on our periodic table. Okay, so halogens are up next and halogens are the most reactive non-metals on our periodic table. And um, so there's lots of chemical reactions happening when these get together. Um, and form bonds, but I went ahead and put the blowtorch on here. The blowtorch that's classically used to make creme brulee um, because they are so highly reactive. Um, they do have seven valence electrons. If you look at their placement, we're way over here now, okay? So it's gonna start with fluorine and go all the way down in a column. 
And these ones are going to be highly reactive non-metals. So something to note about halogens. Halogens, because they have seven valence electrons, and alkali metals, because they have one valence electron, they're like a match made in heaven, right? So this whole little heart over here, a match made in heaven. So they're going to bond very easily with one another. And um, they actually form different kinds of salts and things like that. Um, but I just wanted to note that if we have a like a creme brulee torch of fire and then our marshmallow for the alkali metals, we can make the perfect roasted marshmallow and that roasty toasty marshmallow for our s'mores or whatever. So this is our match made in heaven on the periodic table for bonding, right? Okay, next up is gonna be our noble gases. And our noble gases have full outer shells. So they're very stable, they're very happy in other words. Um, they're non-reactive. So these are not going to react at all. They're not going to explode or catch on fire or any of those things that the other ones will do, okay? Now, when I think of noble gases, they're all gases, first up. So they're gonna be very light and airy. Um, so I do think of like a mousse, right? So chocolate mousse dessert is the one that I'm relating a noble gas to. Where are they at? They are right here in the very last column on the periodic table. Um, the thing that I do want to note about these is they all have uh, a full outer shell of eight except for helium and helium because it only has one uh, energy level or one shell in its atom. Uh, the first shell can only hold two, right? Two valence electrons. So it has two valence electrons, but because that's the maximum that it can hold, it still has a full outer shell like the rest of the noble gases. So it is still stable and happy like the rest. Now, just to mention the other families, you guys, there are other families and they're all named starting with the first element that you see. So boron, this is a boron family. Carbon, here's a carbon family. Nitrogen, this is a nitrogen family. And oxygen, this is the oxygen family. So it's really easy to remember their names. Um, however, there's not really anything extraordinarily noteworthy about these families. It's not like they're not important. Of course they are. But the other families' properties are just so um, enthusiastically out there with their reactivity and their cool things going on um, to note. But these are kind of, uh, you know, a little bit more bland, which is why I chose cookies for these families because cookies, um, although they do come in a variety of colors and flavors, if you have a plate of cookies and then all these wonderful roasty toasty marshmallows or creme brulee, all these other things we've talked about, you're probably not gonna go after the cookie, right? It's just a plain ordinary cookie. It's delicious, but it's still a cookie. Uh, now, just to make a note, there are some elements in these families that are extremely important, but as a whole, not so much. So, um, Oxygen, we definitely need oxygen in order to breathe and live. Nitrogen makes up the majority of our air, right? Uh, carbon is arguably the most important element on our periodic table because it's what makes up all living things. But like I said, as a whole entire family, hmm, it's just not as memorable, not as noteworthy as the others that we talked about. So overall, you guys, I hope this was incredibly helpful to remembering the periodic table families. So if this video was helpful to learning the periodic table families, you guys, please go ahead and like and subscribe to my channel so you can see all the new videos I'm posting on Science Explained. Thank you all so much for watching. Bye, everybody.